Welcome to CYB 4304, Cybersecurity Law and Policy. My name is Dr. Galliano. This course will provide a framework for the regulations and policies intended to protect assets from cyber attacks. You will practice security information gathering and create security plans to reduce those attacks. You will also develop security procedures and processes for responding to security breaches and assessing risk for information assets. Now your prerequisite for the course, ITC 4305 Internet and Network Security, also known as the Security Plus Prep course, laid the groundwork that you needed for this course. Additionally, you may have also already taken SEC 4303 IS and Policy Analysis or other pertinent courses in your degree plan all with the aim of prepping you for this course. Now, our text for the course is Security Policies and Implementation Issues. Uh, that's in its third edition by Johnson and Eastham and published by Jones and Bartlett Learning. Now, upon a completion of the course, you should be able to do all of the following six items. Classify the vulnerabilities in the Information Technology Security Policy Framework Definition. Number two, assess an acceptable use policy implementation plan for an organization. Number three, outline a risk assessment policy defining a separation of duties to deter fraudulent actions within the seven domains and policy definitions. Number four, analyze the security awareness training policy for new and existing employees at an organization. Number five, examine a computer incident response policy. And then finally, number six, plan an organization-wide cybersecurity policy that ensures compliance within the seven domains of the IT infrastructure. Now, this course aligns to the new LifePace learning plan structure, and we've been into that um, LPL now for about nine months, so chances are very high that unless this is your very first course, and I don't think that likely, that means you'll have the following activities. Discussion boards in Units 1 and 5, live lectures in Units 2 and 6, lab assignments in Units 3 and 7, and journals in Units 4 and 8. Uh, now, I mentioned that uh, it's unlikely that you've uh, encountered these before because of the fact that we've been in the live pace learning plan structure now for uh, about the last nine months. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about each of those items. Now, you're likely already familiar, even under the old course structure with discussion boards and journals. They're simply reflective writing assignments, uh, and they're worth 10 points each now for discussions and five points each now for journals. So the amount of points that we um, provision to the discussions and journals has increased, and so they are worth more now than they were previously. The live lectures are synchronous opportunities for all class members to engage together in the course material. We're going to have two of those. They're worth 10 points each. The sessions are mandatory. Uh, they do count towards your overall course grade. And should you miss the session, you are required to complete an alternate assignment. Again, they are mandatory. Now, in Unit 3, you're going to complete uh, a theory lab. We call it Lab 3, Defining a Security Policy Framework. And in this lab, you're going to research security policy frameworks. Then you're going to determine the appropriate security policy uh, definitions to mitigate specific risks, uh, threats, and vulnerabilities. And then you're going to organize your results into a framework that can become part of a layered security strategy. Uh, now, don't uh, fret too much about this because we are going to go over this in depth during our Unit 2 live lecture. Uh, and again, this is a Unit 3 assignment. So we'll have the opportunity to talk about this again before you actually have to complete the work. I do want to note that this Unit 3 assignment is worth 20% of your course grade. So that's one-fifth of your entire course grade is on this one assignment. 
Now in Unit 7, similarly, we'll do another theory lab titled Lab 6, Creating an Incident Response Policy. And in this lab, you're going to define the purpose of an incident response team, identify the major elements of an incident response methodology, and then, then identify the critical management, human resources, legal information technology, and information systems security team members that are going to comprise this IR team. You'll create an incident response policy that defines the IRT, again, that's incident response team, uh, purpose and goal, and the authority granted uh, should an incident occur. Again, we'll go over this lab in depth during our Unit 6 live lecture before the assignment is due in Unit 7. Uh, and this one uh, is worth 30% of your course grade. So nearly one third of your course grade is in this Unit 7 lab. Between the two labs, that's half of your course grade. So you can quickly ascertain then how important these two uh, Unit 3 and Unit 7 labs uh, are to your overall course success. Now, as I looked at all these various assignments, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited by what I see. Uh, you're going to get work on two very important cybersecurity theory labs. Uh, you're going to get to participate in discussion posts and journal topics. Uh, and I think what uh, you'll come away with is, is that while this work is engaging, uh, while it's exciting work, while it's the kind of things you'll be doing in your career, the course is designed to allow you to demonstrate your knowledge of cybersecurity law and policy. So my advice to you is to make the most of that opportunity. Your assignments should be of job ready portfolio quality. And what I mean by that is you're going to be gaining real world experience uh, as you work through these uh, various uh, assignments. Uh, and uh, when you go to apply for a job, irrespective of whether you have one now or not, um, your prospective employers are going to want to know what you did while you were engaged in your studies here at Columbia Southern University. So again, please make it count. Now, you're going to be doing a fair amount of writing, but, uh, you know, I always have to caveat that statement by saying that one of the many things that you must do well in cyber and IT is to communicate well, right? So um, although it may seem like a lot of writing, uh, it's all for a purpose. Now, 4304, Cyber 4304, is formatted like any other course you've had here at Columbia Southern University. Uh, and so if you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My contact information, as always, will be in the Ask the Professor forum. I do want to highlight one very important point in closing. CSU will verify your participation of academically related activities at the end of the first week. Now, for us, that means your discussion board posting, because that's what we do in this course in the first week. That must be submitted during the first week in order to verify course participation. If you fail to post your discussion board, uh, board posting in week one, then you will be institutionally dropped from the course. There's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. So please, please make that discussion post during the first week. Now, uh, I look forward to working with each of you over the next eight weeks. All I ask is that you give me your best effort. Take care and we will see you soon.